today the only tramway on the Indian subcontinent is here in Calcutta. Once there had been seven British-built, financed and operated tramways, now this is the sole survivor. There were also a handful of trolleybus systems, one of which opened as late as 1975 and is still operating in truncated form. This exotic excursion into the electric traction delights of the Indian subcontinent begins on the island of Sri Lanka, the one-time British colony of Ceylon. For any visitor arriving by sea, their first view of the trams would be at the fort adjacent to the main jetty. Although most of the more wealthy Europeans alighting from the steamers opted to travel by car or rickshaw, some did board the waiting trams. Here a well-dressed crowd clambers first on board one of the original open-sided toast racks. And then onto one of the locally built centre entrance standards. These sequences show the locally built standards modernised in the late 30s with centre entrances. The compact seven and a half mile system dating from 1898 had been financed by British Capital. Owned and operated originally by the Colombo Electric Tramway and Lighting Company, the system had been passed into municipal control in 1944. The original fleet consisted of 24 open cross-bench two-axle cars. Number 7 was one of the original 1898 cross-bench cars, but in rebuilt form. two-class fare system was in force. Over the years the fleet had undergone many alterations and additions so that by the mid-fifties there were four basic body designs. The oldest were the 1898 cars which after 1943 were progressively modernized with new sheet metal bodies. They had interior longitudinal seating. The locally built standards dated from 1913 onwards. These had been rebuilt in the late 30s with centre entrances and two and two seating. There was also a more modern looking standard. A few of these had rear as opposed to centre entrances. When the late Gwyn Thomas called in at Colombo during a voyage to Australia in the mid-50s, he made this unique record of the two surviving routes. The other, a short shuttle, having been absorbed into a new trolleybus route worked by British-built double-deckers. 
The city authorities had decided to replace its trams as early as 1950, and the first trolleybus route was actually completed during 1951. However, following a lengthy dispute with the electricity industry, the first conversion did not take place until July 1953. Standing at the front of the car, Gwyn Thomas took this unique record of the run out to Grand Pass as the four-wheeler progressed slowly along the narrow streets. The whole network was double track, except for a very short length of single track outside the depot. While serving in the forces, several enthusiasts did visit Colombo in the years immediately after the war, by which time there was no sign of any of the handful of bogey cars which had entered service before 1914. Having obtained permission from the then manager, Richard Wiseman had toured the 13 road depot and works on the 15th of December 1945. He noted it was well equipped, with six roads given over to overhauls and storage. Owing to wartime shortages, out of a total fleet of 52 cars, only 32 were in service. Approaching Armour Street, served by a mile-long shuttle route until replaced by trolleybuses in July 1953. At the junction, a glimpse of an XLT single-decker and one of the early double-decker trolleybuses. The first 35 of which were all BUTs. The terminus at Grand Pass was some three miles from the fort. Journey time back to town approximately 30 minutes. In 1945, nine cars had been required to provide a five-minute headway. Shortly after Gwyn Thomas took these sequences, the government would nationalise all other road transport in 1957 except for the trams and trolleybuses, a move which undoubtedly hastened the demise of the remaining trams. Originally having a mix of controllers, from 1945 onwards most were fitted with DK-13s. BUT trolleybuses had a mix of Weyman and East Lancashire bodies. 
the final two and a half miles of tramway were replaced on the 30th of June 1960 by a fleet of 26 Sunbeam single-deckers with East Lancashire bodies. Sadly, this well-constructed system hardly paid for itself, being replaced as from the 2nd of December 1964 by ex-London Transport RTLs, many of which would remain on the island in ever worsening condition for many years. Northwards now into the mountain kingdom of Nepal, home of the legendary Gurkhas and also to the subcontinent's only surviving trolleybus system at Kathmandu, which opened some ten years after Colombo ceased operation. Following close collaboration with the Chinese, a single route was opened on the 28th of December 1975. This followed the main road linking the capital, Kathmandu, with the ancient town of Bhaktapur. The fleet consisted of 22 Chinese-built, Shanghai-type left-hand running SK-541s. Each vehicle had a crew of two, including a roving conductor. Mike Russell took these scenes along the 13-kilometer route in 1989. Some years later, a further influx of Chinese-built trolleybuses would arrive, but by 1999, ten years after these sequences were filmed, the whole operation was said to be in poor condition so much so that only half the fleet was roadworthy. As a result, on the 19th of December 2001, the route would be abandoned. But in September 2003, it did partially reopen, and this truncated portion is still believed to be operating today but with just a handful of vehicles. Whether the 13 kilometer route will ever be reactivated throughout remains to be seen. The next exotic destination is the one-time capital of Pakistan and now the country's major port and trading centre. No photographs have come to light of either the steam or horse tramways, but fortunately film does exist of the fuel-powered trams which ran for over 60 years. Dating from 1924, 94 was the first of a new design of 51 petrol trams built by the East India Tramways Company. After the war, 13 cars were built with diesel engines. Fuel pumps dominated the entrance to the depot and works facility off Bunder Road. Karachi's first couple of English-built petrol trams had displaced some horse trams in 1909. Then the British-financed East India Tramways Company gradually expanded its operations until the system was more or less completed by 1916. Conversion from petrol to diesel started in the late 30s, just before the system was acquired by the Muhammad Ali Tramways Company. Ray Muller, a captain in the American Merchant Navy, took these scenes shortly after his ship had docked. Latterly, service on this three-mile route to the port only operated at peak times, ferrying dock workers to and from central Karachi.
All the cars were 28 feet long and rode on 8-foot wheelbase trucks. Latterly they had simplex gearboxes and Perkins P4 engines mounted beneath the centre seat. Look out for telltale wisps of exhaust fumes. During his visit, Jeff Todd captured all the atmosphere of this bustling tramway with its fleet of 64 virtually identical vehicles. All seated 50 passengers on five sets of back-to-back -back benches with padded backs. Those seats behind the driver were officially reserved for ladies only. The conductor made regular use of the footboards and in bad weather shutters could be lowered. Drivers had a throttle key, a gear lever and a clutch pedal, as well as the usual foot-operated gong. All this equipment would have to be transferred at each stub terminal, where there was also a waiting supply of watering cans for filling the radiators. The only braking was by means of a handbrake at each end. Most visitors recall the trams as being quite nifty, with a top speed of about 25 miles an hour. The 10-mile system was mostly double track, but there were some sections of single line working. approaching the main terminus at Boulder Market with its unusual roadside loading. Only cars heading for the port proceeded beyond this point. It is believed that the entire network closed altogether in 1972.
Despite its huge population, India only had five operating tramways and two trolleybus systems. No film has come to light of the trams of Kaumpur, Madras and Delhi, nor the system at Banarish, which was built but never opened. Hugh Borman did take these rare slides of Delhi's meter-gauge trams in late 1961, shortly before the system closed. Delhi had also been home to an experimental trolleybus operation. These cars probably dated from the opening of the system in 1908. The Bombay Electric Supply and Tramways Company, or BEST, always prided itself on copying London's lead, even down to naming one group of cars the LCC class. Horse trams had first arrived in 1874. Electrification began in 1907 and the last extension opened in 1935. After the war, ownership of the BEST passed to the Bombay Municipality, together with some 420 trams. A tramway replacement programme was instigated in 1953, and by 1964 the entire 31-mile system would be gone. Only one route, the 3.5-mile 10, was replaced by trolleybuses. However, the 12 Skoda single-deckers had a very short life lasting from June 1962 to March 1971. By the beginning of 1960 there were still approximately 150 cars, the oldest being the survivors of a once numerous class of coupled two-axle trains. The other single-deckers came from New York. 25's 3rd Avenue cars similar to these were dispatched to India under the Marshall Plan in early 1949. On arrival, their bodies were narrowed, the doors removed and the platforms tapered. For British visitors, it was the double-deckers that impressed, although the original 15 single-truckers had all gone by 1939. However, most of the 58 bogey cars built by the company in the early 20s were still active in 1960. In deference to London, they were known as the LCC class and rode on LCC-type maximum traction trucks. Between 1934 and 1951, the company built a further 48 upgraded versions. Also still in evidence in 1960 were most of the one-time fleet of 23 centre entrance Pullmans dating from 1937 to 1939. However, shortly after independence in 1947, these Pullmans had had their centre doors removed. Sadly, no film survives of this magnificent state-of-the-art 86-seater built by English Electric in 1932. These next sequences were filmed at various times between 1960 and 1963 by Messrs. Collinson, Santarelli and Todd. First, views of cars on routes replaced during the first swathe of closures in the early 1960s, although precise closure dates are not always known. The lines serving Tardeo and Gwalia tank were amongst the busiest on the system, 
requiring over 50 cars in rush hours. Rare views of the two axle couple trains. Action in the Tardeo Gualia tank neighbourhoods. The final line to remain was a truncated portion of Route 5, operating every seven and a half minutes between Boribunda and Dardi. These next sequences follow the 5 and 5A when they were still working the full eight miles from the city centre to King's Circle by a mix of Pullmans, LCC and X3rd Avenue cars. P cars, 55 trams have been needed. On leaving the city's museum terminus, the fives headed past several imposing Victorian civic buildings before making their way northwards towards Dardy. Due to the height of some floats in the city's religious processions, the overhead was set very high at 21 foot 9 inches. En route, there was evidence of recently abandoned lines. <laughs> 